Hi everyone, welcome back to this channel. This is Timothy from Cognito Academy, and in this video, we will be learning the kinematics of falling objects. We will be covering falling in two scenarios, namely freefall in vacuum and falling in air. Let's first look at freefall in vacuum. Freefall in vacuum, meaning no air resistance is involved. In this clip, we see a bowling ball and a feather being released in vacuum and we observe that they take the same duration to fall the same height, even though the bowling ball is heavier. This is because acceleration of free fall in vacuum is independent of mass. Let's investigate why. Let's assume the bowling ball to be 10 kg and the feather 1 kg. We know that gravitational field strength on Earth's surface is 9.1 newtons per kilogram, meaning for every kilogram, it experiences a weight of 9.1 newtons. Hence, we multiply both masses by 9.1 newtons per kilogram to get their weights. Note that weight is the only force acting on this object in vacuum. Next, since Newton's second law states that force is equal to mass times acceleration, acceleration is simply force divided by mass. Hence, we take the force, which is the weight of each object, and divide by its mass to give us its acceleration. And as we can see, Acceleration due to gravity for both objects are similar, even though the bowling ball is heavier. Another observation is that gravitational field strength is numerically similar to acceleration due to gravity, and this is true regardless of mass or the gravitational field you are in. So now, we know that acceleration due to gravity, which is the acceleration of falling objects in vacuum, is the same for all objects on Earth at 9.81 meters per second squared which explains why the feather and the bowling ball took the same duration to fall. Here's the velocity time graph for both the bowling ball and the feather. Note that both objects share the same line on the graph since we learned that both their acceleration are the same at 9.81 meters per second squared. Once both objects are dropped, we see a straight line graph with a constant gradient of 9.81. Since we know both objects undergo constant acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared due to gravity. Another feature of the graph is the area under it, which gives us the displacement of both objects. Since both objects share the same graph, we can see that at the 1 second mark, area under the graph for both objects are similar. And we can see that this is true at any point of time in the entire duration. The displacement of both objects are the same, which was what we saw in the clip. We have covered free fall in vacuum, but what about falling in air? In real life, air is present all around us. Hence, air resistance is bound to occur on objects that are falling. Here is a clip of feathers falling in air. Observe their speed. Notice that they are falling at constant speed, instead of accelerating down like the bowling ball and the feather just now. This is because the feathers experience air resistance here which cancels out their weight entirely. Hence, net force on these feathers are zero, which by Newton's first law, states that these feathers will continue their state of uniform speed, which is its terminal velocity. Let's take a closer look at what is happening to the feathers at each instant of the fall. When the feathers are first released, its velocity is momentarily zero, and no air resistance acts on it, since air resistance is proportional to velocity. Therefore, the only force that acts on it is its weight, which results in its downwards velocity of 9.81 meters per second squared, as acceleration is given by net force divided by mass. The feather gains velocity, but the higher its velocity, the higher the air resistance, and we can see that the net force on the feather is actually decreasing due to this increasing air resistance. This results in a smaller acceleration, since acceleration is directly proportional to the net force. This feather will accelerate to a velocity where air resistance is equal to its weight, cancelling each other out. Hence, net force on the feather at this point is zero, meaning acceleration is also zero. Velocity now is constant, and we say that feather has reached terminal velocity, falling at constant velocity. Now let's draw the acceleration time graph of this falling feather in air. Initially, when the feather is first released, velocity is zero, hence no air resistance acts on the feather, and acceleration is maximum at 9.81. .1. 
But as the feather gains speed, more air resistance acts on the feather, and the net force on the feather decreases. And since acceleration is proportional to net force, acceleration decreases as well. The feather accelerates to its maximum velocity, which we call terminal velocity, where air resistance cancels out the weight entirely, and net force here is zero, and hence acceleration is also zero. With the acceleration time graph, let's next draw the velocity time graph on the right, using the idea that acceleration is the gradient of the velocity time graph. At the start, we can see that the initial acceleration is the highest, hence gradient for our velocity time graph at the start is the steepest. Over time, the acceleration decreases, meaning our gradient for the velocity time graph becomes less steep. And when acceleration reaches zero, our gradient for the velocity time graph at this point is effectively zero, meaning the graph here is flat. So, to summarize the motion of a falling object in air, the object initially gains velocity rapidly, but over time, this gain in velocity gets less steep, to a point where the object reaches terminal velocity, and thereafter, it stops gaining velocity and continues falling at this constant velocity. This wraps up our video on the kinematics of falling objects. If you liked this video and found it helpful, do like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to stay tuned for more content. Also, visit our website and Instagram for more academic content. Links are provided down below. With that, see you!